Good afternoon and good evening to everyone. My name is Dave Frankowski and I'll be your moderator for today's class. And welcome to another lecture given by the Oceanside California class. This is a school and not a church. Neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. The school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh or Elohim and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given unto our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year of 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in the year of 1958. And we hold classes in the United States and in various other countries. The Oceanside class was established in 1994. At this time, I'd like to introduce to you the Dean of the Oceanside class, Dr. Dennis Volpe, and the president, Dr. Carl Emler. Now in this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title for the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The correct name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The correct title of the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. And the correct name of the Holy Spirit manifest in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and they are not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and there are God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name, and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike the titles of Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. It's a divine title because it's the title that our Creator has chosen for Himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. And a minor investigation on your part into a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew, the Greek, nor the Latin languages have any letters or characters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that's made by the letter J. Neither was there a letter J in our own English language until some 1400 years after the death of the Messiah, which would make such names as Jesus and Jehovah impossible renderings for the true name of our and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state, he is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, the limits and the bounds of everything that exists. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state, symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. We've drawn this cloud to extend all around the edges of this chart to show that everything on the chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Yahweh Elohim. This is the word or son a super incorporeal being, that is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form could only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifest himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the whole world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there's only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So a simple yet intelligent question that we should ask ourselves is, what did they call the Savior when he walked the earth plane? 
and a further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preface to the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It's the divine pattern because it's Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, he called Moses on top of Mount Sinai, and he showed him this threefold tabernacle pattern in a vision. Later on, Yahweh instructed Moses to build one in the wilderness exactly like the one he had seen in his vision on the mount. The tabernacle pattern is a threefold pattern consisting of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court roundabout. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and it operates according to the structure and the function of this threefold tabernacle pattern, and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The school has 10 primary constitutional objectives and aims, and they are as follows. One, to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Two, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah, without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Three, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Four, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. Five, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Six, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seven, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons, operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eight, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Nine, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained. There is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And ten, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah, with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace, and our slogan is speak the truth. We'll begin this afternoon with a prayer by Dr. Bruce Geller from our Oceanside class, and we'll have a scripture read, which will be Matthew, the seventh chapter, and that'll be read by Dr. Jerry Geller from our Oceanside class. Thank you, Dave. Good afternoon and evening to everyone. Let us all bow our hearts and minds and let us thank our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through Yahshua the Messiah for all the many blessings that he has bestowed upon us. We ask you, Yahweh, to calm us down from the cares and the, the uh, dealings of the flesh and just set this time aside so we can concentrate on, on the things that are being said today. We want to just thank you for all the many blessings that you've given us, especially teaching us about yourself so we can honestly say within ourselves that we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you are real and that you do have a purpose, a pattern, and a plan, and you have been merciful unto us, for it's nothing that we could do or nothing that we have done to warrant the kind of love that you have bestowed upon us. You've just shown us your grace, and we're so grateful for that. We just ask you for strength in these last days, and we ask you to help us with the infirmities that we have, and we've got, we've got them. And we just ask for your comfort and for your direction at all times. 
And all these things we want to thank you for and ask you for in the name of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. Let us all say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good evening, class. Tonight I'll be reading Matthew, the seventh chapter from the Holy Name Bible, critically containing the Holy Name uh, version of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts, revised by the late A.B. Trena of the Scripture Research Association Incorporated in College Park, Maryland. Matthew 7. Judge not that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. Why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considereth not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or how will thy say to thy brother, let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye? Thou hypocrite. First cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and thou shalt see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Or what man is there of you, whom if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Enter ye in by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat, because small is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto light, and few there be that find it. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Not everyone that saith unto me, Rabbi, Rabbi, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say unto me in that day, Rabbi, Rabbi, did we not eat and drink in thy name, and in thy name have cast out demons, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then I will say unto them, I never knew you, Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. And it came to pass when Yahshua had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine, 
for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Matthew, the seventh chapter. Thank you, Dr. Jerry Geller and Dr. Bruce Geller. And this, this afternoon, our scripture readers will be Dr. Sharon Welch from our Syracuse class and Dr. Linda Volpe from our Oceanside class. And we'll have a three speaker format this afternoon, each speaker getting approximately 35 minutes. And our first speaker will be Dr. John Cometti from our Syracuse class. I'd like to say thank you. Um, and uh, <clears throat> we'll just, uh, let's start right at the scripture, please. Matthew uh, seven, start at one. Yeah. Judge not that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye measure, it shall be measured to you again. So here we're talking about um, judging in this judgment. You know, drop down um, just quickly to, uh, I think I want 19. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Where, wherefore, by their fruits, ye shall know them. See, so we're talking about this judging and this judging is going to, according to um, this parable that the Messiah is, is talking with his disciples is saying that, you see, these trees are, are, are going to be judged by their fruit and by the fruit, you see, and we look at this and I'll just say, you know, for myself, um, I never had the opportunity to meet the founder, Dr. Kinley, um, in the flesh. But in um, reading his transcripts, at looking at um, the charts that he had drawn um, by uh, being marveled by the things um, that he had taught in this school, um, the things that I have learned uh, since coming into this school, I'd have to say to you that I did, in my heart, in my mind, judge that man by the fruits of his tree, of that tree, just as I never had the opportunity <clears throat> um, to walk with as the disciples had, um, or to eat with um, Yahshua the Messiah while he was yet in that fleshly body, I once again judge the things that I read and the things that I, I see, um, the way it works according to the pattern um, and the ages and dispensations. Um, I would have to say that that book or that tree um, in my heart and in my mind um, was judged by the, the fruits thereof or the, or, or, or the fruits that that tree brought forth or had demonstrated. And I look um, to the operation of the Holy Spirit as it worked its way down through the ages and dispensations uh, manifesting himself in we'll say even say um the man noah see and the um faith that he demonstrated uh and of course i want you to see he, he also is judging from the fruits which they which which he he had seen you see um or the witnesses that he had been given uh, to believe that it was going to rain when there was no rain that had fallen at that time. Um, let alone the earth to be um, destroyed because a judgment by the Most High was made upon wickedness. And that wickedness needed to be destroyed see so i'm just confirming as i look down through the law and the prophets 
that this discerning, see, uh, or judging, I should say, is being done as we look to the fruits of the, the spirit, see, or the fruits in which is being brought, brought forth. Um, you know, I think I, I still there, I, I still in my own mind think about the deception of, um, for those that may know uh, or have read with the Catholic Church, with all the issues they got going on, you know, you think they wouldn't be discussing whether somebody baptized somebody, but again, the deception of a layman of the church that really feared for the lives of his fellow, you see, um, uh, churchgoers, in that he truly felt that without being baptized, those souls were going to hell, to the point where he reported it to the diocese. That is a complete, you see, deception of the true fruits in this age that are necessary for us to um, receive and judge. You follow me? I'm saying that in looking at that, you see, I can put a judgment according to the law and the prophets on that is being in total darkness of what Yahweh he desired. Let's um let's go over um to the uh the the uh all right let's go I'll do this I'll work this backwards let's go over to the 17th chapter of uh first Samuel uh, start at one, and I'll tell you where, where we need to go after that. I hope. <laughs> First Samuel 17 and 1. Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle and were gathered together at Shochem, which belongeth to Judah, and pitched between Shochem and uh, Isaiah and Ephraim. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together. And now, I want, this is exactly what I wanted, where I want. Okay. Now, mm -hmm. Saul. Now, remember Saul? Mm -hmm. And who Saul is? Now, let's go over to the ninth, first Samuel, the ninth chapter. Now, remember, I want you to keep in mind, Saul's there. Saul's here. Saul's at this battle. First Samuel 9. <laughs> And one. Uh -huh. Oh, really? Now there was a man of Benjamin whose name was Kish, and the son of Abilo, and the son of Zero, and the son of Becheroth, yeah. the son of uh, and Benjamin, yeah, and mighty two. men of power. Yeah. And he had a son whose name was Saul. Right. So he, so here's Saul. Right. This is this is our introduction to Saul. Go ahead a choice young man and got goodly and there was not among the children of Israel a goodlier person than he from his shoulders and upright he was higher than any of the people so, so another I want you to see that Saul is being betrayed as I'm not saying the giant of David but a well-structured man, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? See, he's, what, it said shoulders and head above everybody else. It's kind of like me sitting or standing next to, do you ever run into one of those basketball players in the grocery store? <laughs> and, you know, they're like 7'3", and, and you got to just stand there and go, how do you even function at that size? <laughs> I mean, when I even, you know, go to these games and have the opportunity to stand next to some of them, I, I, I can't even believe that I, I can't even look up to see their heads because I can't believe the sides of their feet. You know what I'm saying? These, they're huge in other words, you know, 
they 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 look or they're appealing you see to the eye standing up above above man okay so here Saul is now um and remember Saul was also chosen see by the people correct he was the people's choice as as we go on um to learn more about this story and you know Saul as it goes on to talk about he's out um chasing some of his father's um um I'll say um livestock uh and uh in and, and uh he winds up you know finding out that Samuel's going to anoint him and he's going to become you see king of Israel mm -hmm. you know sometimes I'm saying this because I want you to realize at this battle this man stood and he's not some little midget like David is or we understand David to be. And we'll go over and why don't we'll catch a, a short, you see, description of um, um of David. Uh, where do I want? 13? I mean, is it the 13th chapter of 1 Samuel? Around in there? <clears throat> when they pass through 12, is it? I don't know. I, I'm, not, I'm not, not fast at getting these when I'm talking. Um. Is it there? Samuel and David. Oh, I know thir I know what 13 is. I know what uh I know what I was after. Go to first Samuel 13 13. In 13. And Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly, thou hast not kept the commandment of Yahweh the Elohim, which he commanded thee. For now would Yahweh Elohim have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. So Yahweh I want you, yeah, so he, I want, again, read 13, Sharon, I'm going to interrupt you this time. Okay. And Samuel said to Saul, thou has done foolishly. Thou has not kept the commandment of Yahweh the Elohim. So now would you say that in this situation that Samuel is judging something that Saul had done. I, I'd have to say so, right? Yep. And and he has a conclusion or he or or, or to this judgment, right? And why he came to the conclusion, of course, we understand now that who's operating this show. Don't, don't, don't run with the thing. You see, I'm, I'm trying to show that a judgment was being set forth, okay, on what, see, was um, the, the king, all right, of Israel. And he's letting him know because you didn't follow the word of Yahweh mm -hmm. just as Adam didn't follow the word of Yahweh but Noah had followed the word of Yahweh see how we're this we're judging you see <laughs> according to the word of Yahweh, which is that fruit of the tree. Okay, so here we are. I'm, 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 I still want um, um, try uh, go get First Samuel twelve and seven, okay. and then we'll get back over to the seventeenth chapter. Twelve and seven. Mm -hmm. Now, therefore, stand still that I may reason with you before Yahweh of all righteous acts of Yahweh. Which all right, he Sarah, did. Go, go up to about four. Four. Um, and they said, thou hast not def defrauded us nor oppressed us, neither hast thou taken aught of any man's hand. And he said unto them, Yahweh is witness against you, and his anointed is witness this day, 
that you uh -huh. have not found aught in my hand. And they answered, he is witness. Go ahead. Go ahead. And Samuel said unto the people, it is Yahweh that advanced Moses and Aaron. Now I want you to see right here how once again the Holy Spirit manifesting through a vessel is going back to show forth something of the glory of Yahweh. I want you to understand that's a good, that's the fruit of a good of a good tree mm -hmm. to go back and understand something you see that has already taken place that's going to show forth the glory and honor of Yahweh so go ahead Sharon so he's going back and he's he's now teaching them just as the founder and his good fruits did with us took mm -hmm. us back and took us and showed us the things you see that were necessary um uh for us to, to to have an understanding of through the blessing and grace of 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 the holy spirit itself now mm -hmm. go ahead and samuel <laughs> said unto the people it is yahweh that advanced moses and aaron and that mm -hmm. brought your fathers up out of the land of Egypt. Uh, so it's Yahweh, right? So what is he doing? He's declaring that name all, again, okay? Mm -hmm. That Holy Spirit is declaring that name, which it has done down through, you follow me? And that's how we judge. Not We don't, we don't want to judge, you see, uh, somebody because of a name just because uh, it's, you know, the cool thing to do. No, these things have been established. You follow me? And we just need to stand still, as it says, and observe the Holy Spirit operating. And we will then be able to recognize according to the fruits, you see, of the Spirit. Go on now. Verse 7. Now, therefore, stand still that I may reason with you before Yahweh of all the righteous acts of Yahweh which he did to you and to your fathers. So again, I want you to see that it's Yahweh doing all of these righteous acts or mm -hmm. again, confirming it's that Holy Spirit, you see, that we are discerning and that we are judging coming down through ages and dispensations, see, of working the purpose of the creator of the universe just astonishing just just astonishing now go over and get uh first samuel 16 and 12 that's what i i was looking for also um uh, uh, because i wanted you to see the statute of one who was you know shoulders and head above the other and that was the, the that was the people's choice you see they looked upon that man and they and they chose him to be the one to lead Israel. Go ahead. Uh, here, 16. For, for Samuel 16 and, and 12. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and withal of a beautiful countenance. Now, for those that may not know, and, and for the sake of time, see, there were several other of David's brothers that had already passed before, or that were the children of Jesse, that passed before, you see, um, the prophet, okay? Mm -hmm. And Yahweh had rejected each and every one of those uh, mm -hmm. individuals. Now go ahead here. <clears throat> A good and goodly to look to, and Yahweh said, arise, anoint him, for this is he. So he got this little runny guy. Now, if if we were judging, okay, by a manifestation, we would have surely been wrong, you see, and we would have probably fell in line with the people in in in, in the choosing of who we would want. So I don't know. I mean, uh, some of the, some of the presidents we've chosen, you know, you know what I'm saying. But anyways, that's a whole nother story and a whole nother train of thought. But um, here, 
And, and if we would have looked back, you know, um, at, at several other things and solely judged by what we saw with the eyesight, uh, we would have surely been wrong. And I'm saying to you, that's how wrong I was when I was in the, the Roman Catholic Church, you see, and I was being blindly led. Now, I'm speaking again of that, that priest and, 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 and because of that error, you know, I didn't even realize, and I was even taught it, or I, I wouldn't have made my confirmation, but um, that all the other sacraments, there would, would be seven altogether, would be violated because of the first one, you know? And I think to myself, you know, how I didn't even know that and how I probably would have thought that was pretty stupid had I known it. Because I truly, you know, never seen it that way, nor are the many Catholic friends that I have and the comments that I seen on this school teacher's page, how that even them that were within that faith thought that that was, you know, come on, that, that, that can't be. But yet, what I'm trying to say to you is that is the deception that, that we'll say that one individual that thought so highly of that act and had to run and tell the higher up of the clergy, you see, with, without any witnesses, he made, a, a, he made a judgment call on that priest with a false doctrine. And I, I, I'm, I'm saying, I, I truly in my heart hope that Yahweh never puts, you see, being in, in, that I would put a false judgment on a brother. Do you, do you know what I'm saying? That's why it's important for us to get past the flesh and understand what's going on within the spirit. And, and here with David, okay, and here with Saul, who won from an outward appearance, is gladiator, the gladiator of the two. And here David is, as we just read, this ruddy little, little dude. Mm -hmm. And now I said, said all of that to get us back to the 17th chapter, where we were, and I think it was two or three, where Saul and the armies stood. Mm -hmm. Two, and Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elah and set the battle in array against the Philistines. Mm -hmm. And the Philistines stood on a mountain on the one side, and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side, and there was right. a valley between them. Now look, I'm saying to you tonight, I stood, you see, <laughs> on those peaks, and I stood on the wrong side. Do you mm -hmm. see, when I was in Christianity mm -hmm. and I tried and I brought battle to the Israelites or the IDMRs, whatever, you follow me? Yeah. Those that were preaching the truth, in other words, or the Holy Spirit that was operating in vessels, I brought battle against. I, as that individual wanted to, uh, anyone that knows me knows, I held on to water baptism the longest time, sat in a, in a chair in class for many, many years, <clears throat> still being concerned about water baptism mm -hmm. under the same delusion as that man that turned them in. I sat there is what I'm telling you, of fear for those friends that I had that weren't baptized in that church that could lead to the other wonderful sacraments. And so thankful that Yahweh allowed my ears and my eyes to be opened to the fruits of a tree that I started to talk about with Dr. Kinley. You see, now I'm not preaching and I'm not worshiping that man. I'm thankful to Yahweh that he allowed, you see, that vessel to bring the truth to us that we might 
understand it, as he did all down through the ages and dispensations with those that he had chosen. Let's get over to this battle, the 17th chapter. I'm sorry. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, verse four, and there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. Yeah, big and boy, in other words, right? Even bigger mm -hmm. than Saul. Mm -hmm. But Saul was supposed to be the hero of the people. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. And he had a helmet of brass upon his head and he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. Yeah. And he had gre greaves of brass upon his legs and the target of brass between his shoulders. And the staff of his spear was like a weaver's, weaver's beam. Now, are you getting the picture mm -hmm. that this big dude is decked out basically head to toe in armor. Sharon, mm -hmm. would that be about that's, correct to what she just read? That's right. Yes. Right? Yes. He's got some on his, he's got some on his legs. He's got it here. He's got it there. We ain't mm -hmm. talking about, we're talking about being mm -hmm. well protected to enter into battle. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. <clears throat> And his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron, and one bearing a shield went before him. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel right. and said unto them, Why are you come out to set your battle in array? Am not I a Philistine and you servants to Saul? Choose you a man for you and let him come down to me. If he Go ahead, able... find you a man, find you a man that wants to come down and try mm -hmm. some of this. Here I am. You come down here and try some of this, right? Mm -hmm. You want it? Come on, here I am. Okay? Go ahead. If he be able to fight with me and to kill me, then will we be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall ye be our servants and serve us. Now look, there were millions and millions of dollars last Sunday bet on the Super Bowl, okay? Mm -hmm. I'll bet you that when this little ruddy dude goes up before Goliath, that the odds would be heavily on Goliath's side to beat that little rut behind right huh yeah now let's get down to the to, to saul when he allows david to go up against this man that's challenging all of israel in principle all of yahweh's children are being you see called out go ahead um let's see um Okay, what shall be done for him? By 20. 20? Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Farther. And David rose up early in the morning and left the sheep with the keeper and oh. took and went as Jesse had commanded him. And okay. he came to Go the ahead. trench as the yep. host was going forth to fight and shouted mm -hmm. for the battle. Right. Go ahead. For for Israel and the Philistines had put the battle in array, army against army. And David left his carriage in the hand of a keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren. Right, go ahead. And go as ahead. he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistine, and spoke according to the same words, and David heard them. Okay, so De now Goliath mm -hmm. comes out again, right? During the course mm -hmm. of this, this, this standoff, and says it again. Here I am, mm -hmm. right? You want some? Come get it. <laughs> and here David is. Go ahead. He hears it for the first time. Go ahead. And 
And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were sore afraid. Whoa. Go ahead. And the men of Israel said, have you seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up, and it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king will en enrich him with right. great riches mm -hmm. and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free mm -hmm. in Israel. And David Up spoke. Down to 32. Yeah, but okay, I, this is good. This is good right here because I want you to see that this, this boy Saul, okay, that was a head and shoulders of, uh, taller than any of them boys that were down there being scared. He's ready to put up money, his daughter, and all kinds of stuff to find somebody <laughs> to beat this, this champion. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and I'll drop down where Steve had asked or said. Five minutes, Dr. Yeah. Committee. Okay, thank you. And 32, and David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and so fight. David, David said to Saul, let no man's heart, right? Let fail. no man's heart. Read it, Sharon, please. Let no man's heart fail because of him. Don't like, fail because there's a giant out there before the children of Israel, in principle again, who's that giant out there before today? And don't fail is the message. Don't fail. Don't have a failing heart. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. For thou art but a youth and a man of war from his youth. Right. Go ahead. No, you, you, said, ain't, you don't have none of the tools that are right. needed. Mm -hmm. If he judged him by the manifestation. Go ahead. And David said unto Saul, thy servant kept his father's sheep. And there came a lion and a bear and yep. took a lamb out of the flock. Right. So, so in other words, he has another words witness the fruits of the spirit operating right mm -hmm. he knows that yahweh allowed him to rescue those sheep and he knows that yahweh is going to rescue his sheep don't right. be weak of heart yahweh will prevail right see don't matter the giant we find ourselves up against. Stand still. Have faith. Mm -hmm. Yahweh will deliver. That's the message that David is 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 putting forth. Now look, the wisdom of this youth. Mm -hmm. To take what he was most familiar with, the weapons, you see, that he knew. Now, look, a warrior looks on that and says, wrong weapons for this fight. Mm -hmm. If we judge solely by the manifestation, again, you see, we will surely, most likely, have it wrong. In this case, Vegas would have, you see, anybody mm -hmm. that would have took the odds in this case mm -hmm. would have been vi victorious. David didn't even want that armor that the others were accustomed to. He took a little slingshot and a stone and found the weakest spot in that man's armor. Mm -hmm which was sitting right behind his eyes. You follow me? And he hits him, you see, dead square. See? And the spot that was necessary to drop a giant. Those are the fruits of the spirit. Yahshua the Messiah comes in. If, and those of Israel that were waiting for that physical kingdom 
to be restored. And Saul, the let me say the looks of a Saul to come along and be king for them. They should have learned from the past. Had they gone back and, and, and witnessed the Holy Spirit repeatedly, time, whether it had been with Noah, whether it had been with Adam, whether it had been with Abraham, whether it had been with, you see, a Moses, whether it had been with Jonah, whether it had been with Daniel, you see, whether it had been with Obadiah, witnessing the things of the Holy Spirit and the tools, they would have and surely should have known who Yahshua, the Messiah, was when he stepped you see, you see, um, on 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 earth in that body, should have known. See, but because that creature was subject to vanity, it's the mercy and it's the grace of Yahweh that has allowed us to understand. You see, the things that we do, and the things that we do, and the things that we say. And the things that we understand, and all the other blessings that come along with being chosen, you see, it's don't don't miss them. They miss the Holy Spirit working through David. They miss the Holy Spirit working through Yahshua the Messiah. You see, they witnessed the Holy Spirit working back there in that law through Moses, because I don't know if I had it read. It, it says it went back there where we were that he that Yahweh had delivered them at the hand. Of Moses, you see what I'm saying, and those, those uh, things coming down through the ages and dispensations, you see, are a blessing. I, I hope and trust you got something out of that. Um, all glory to Yahshua and Messiah. See, hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor Kometi. And our second speaker will also be from our Syracuse class, Dr. Deb Kometi. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. I um, always loved the story of David or anything that David was doing. Um, he's such an uh, inspiration, but also he's such a learning character because he was a man after Yahweh's own heart. So anytime that uh, you're described by the creator as a man after his own heart, uh, you want to take a look at David and see what he's doing. And, um, you know, this idea with David and Goliath, very popular. Everybody knows it, whether they're in a religious uh, setting or not. They know about David and Goliath. Uh, we were kind of taught in Methodist you know, that those stories really weren't true. They were just kind of like just stories um, in the Bible, get you to understand something about God, but they didn't really happen. So uh, coming into class, it was a um, Helen Keller moment for me to start to relearn Adam and Eve and Noah and all the gang and know that they were true and know that yet Yahweh was working with a specific set of people and he was uh, had a purpose in mind, and he was pushing that along. Now, I never knew that there was a purpose, and I never knew that even, like I said, the stories in the Bible were, were real. So when we would read the Bible in Methodist, we would just read like a little verse, and then the, the pastor or the minister, he would have like a little something to say about it. And then the rest of it was just ritual. The choir would sing. We'd pass the plate. We'd do communion. So um, it really wasn't the learning um, environment that you find here in class. Um, even if you don't think you're looking for God, this is such a place to learn so much about the Bible and things that happen. And um, I remember a, a woman came to our class and she was really, really excited about class. And she came routinely, regularly for quite a long time until she started reading the Old Testament and she saw the God of the Old Testament who she thought was different than Jesus or Yahshua when she saw him being so mean and wiping out women and children and you know it was uh, his designated plan. She stopped coming altogether. She could not handle the fact that he, he would do that. So um, you know, my point is that she learned an awful lot about the history and a lot awful lot about what was going on with Israel 
And then she, you know, Yashua didn't pick her. So she ended up going on her way. But um, I wanted to go over um, to 1 John uh, 3 and 1. John was talking um, about this David and Goliath situation and talking about, you know, the fruits of a man that are a good tree and the fruits of a man that are a bad tree. And we, somebody else get, um, let me see, it is Ephesians 2 and 1. And somebody else get First John three and one, and um, you know think about this for a minute because even if you were a good kid, which you know most of us weren't anyways, but even if you were a good kid, you still weren't going to make the grade. You still were not going to make the cut. You need the Holy Spirit. Okay, so go ahead. First John three one. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we, sh we should be called the children of Yahweh. Okay, hold that thought, Sharon, Ephesians 2 and 1. What manner of love now he's put upon us, right? Now here's, here's where we were. If there's any doubt of where you stood before coming into class and receiving a Holy Spirit revelation, this is where you were. Now remember what Linda just read, what manner of love has he bestowed upon us? And why is it such a great gift? Because here's two and one. Sharon. Sorry. And you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Where in in times past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience among whom also we all had our conversation in times past and the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even so, as others. Thank you, Sharon. So now here's Linda reading over there in First John, what manner of love that the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called his children, his kids, okay? We all had our manner of life in times past in the loss of our flesh. Now, the loss of our flesh is quite an umbrella. And you can put your little life right under that umbrella. And you can say to yourself what you were doing, the fruits of your tree, what you were doing before you had a revelation in this class was, let me see if I can uh, think about it real quick. It's Galatians. It'll just give you this little descriptor and you can just sit there and say, wow, what a gift this is, what manner of love this is. And it's kind of like the same idea as when, you know, somebody really does you wrong and you still show them mercy, like Joseph with his brothers, he still showed them kindness. They had betrayed him. They had put him in a pit. They had let him be sold off into slavery. They didn't know where he was going. And yet and still, Joseph showed them kindness at the end. So that's just an example of the fruits of the spirit where Yahweh, even though we had all this going on, the loss of the flesh, we had all this going on and yet and still what manner of love he's bestowed upon us. So now if you want to know a little breakdown of the lust of the flesh, if you're thinking, oh, I, don't, I wasn't that bad. I just didn't go to church. Let's have the little breakdown of the loss of the flesh read. So that's Galatians and it's five and it's uh, 17. 17, for the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led by the spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, uh, lasciviousness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, strife, jealousy, wrath, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and the like. 
of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they who do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of Yahshua. Now, are you catching this? If you look down the list, some of you may check off a few, and some of you may check off every single box because we were, we were of the lust of the mm -hmm. flesh. And guess what? Going on your merry way, you were not going to inherit the kingdom of Yahweh Elohim. And our premise right here tonight is that we, under the sound of the truth, we have definitely become recipients of the Holy Spirit and live in the kingdom now. We've inherited the kingdom now. So now if you look at that previous list, you're not part of that fruit. John tried to show you the fruit that you would be a part of. He showed you David's heart and what he manifested. Now he showed you, he talked about Moses and what he manifested. Now Paul, he's gone through, he's broken down the lust of the flesh. He's told you, you all had your manner of life in this stuff in times past. That's the beauty of this thing. We're not going to have a revival. We're not going to slip off the rock. We're not going to go backwards. Once you have the Holy Spirit, you are sealed. And that should be a strong, strong confidence of the heart. So now we're going to find out what's the spirit about, right? Because John was talking about the good tree and the bad tree. And we've already discussed the good tree with David. Now Paul's given us, and you could really say, you know, a lot of that stuff that Goliath was manifesting, you know, with all his carrying on. But that's not where we're going. We're going to talk about the fruit of the spirit. Go ahead. Galatians 5.22. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And they that are Yahshua's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Don't be desirous of vain glory. Now, I want to key in on that point for just a minute because David, now his brothers got angry with him. And I think John talked about this. They got angry with him when he showed up with like, you know, things to eat. And, uh, you know, he said he wanted to, you know, come down and bring stuff to the, um, to the armies. And they said, oh, you just want to see what's going on. Who are you kidding? David was not, when he said that he would go up against Goliath, his point was not for vainglory. His point, his reason for wanting to go up against that giant was because he had defied and defiled the name of Israel's God, which was Yahweh. And that's what David was under, had under his collar about. I'm going up against, who is this one that would think so much of himself that he would say something about the name of Yahweh, Israel's God. And he wasn't looking for vainglory. And he really, he had fought a lion and a bear, but he really didn't have any experience with giants. Did he know he was coming out of there? Maybe he did, but the point is, it wasn't going to be for his vain glory. It was going to be for the glory of Yahweh, and that's the difference between a true Yahshuan and somebody that's just in class that remembers a lot of scriptures, that goes to every class because they got nothing else going, and that wants to be a bragger about everything they're doing, okay? Your heart is for the glory of Yahshua and not your vain glory. Look at me, everybody. Look at what I'm doing. That was where Saul was at. And Saul got himself into a world of trouble and he died. And I was just reading this thing about Saul and guess what? He died not too far, far, far away from the city of Gath. And that's where Goliath was from. So he, you know, he's right in the whole thing there with, he had to go down. He wanted his own, he wanted his own glory because he feared what the people would say about him rather than the glory that would come from Yah taking the sacrifices, not taking anything from the battle. He did not listen, and it was not looked upon as correct, because when you 
read the fruits of the spirit and it says the faith when you have the faith of the operation right it's joshua and you you don't care that you're going to miss out on a couple sacrifices you're the king for crying out loud you're going to have plenty of sacrifices but he wanted to come back with all that vain glory so the people would think he was something and paul saul's heart is not right but david's was a heart after yahweh's own heart okay so now we've got this picture of the people that are of the spirit and that's the good fruit and we got this picture of the people that are of the flesh and the lust of the flesh now do you know how many people are murdered every single day over the lust of the flesh and you know how many people are robbed and how many crimes go down just for the lust of the flesh it's it's utterly amazing what people will do if somebody a, a girlfriend says to her boyfriend i want you to kill that guy over there because he looked at me wrong and the boyfriend goes and kills them and they all go they go to jail for life and they're teenagers mm -hmm. because of the loss of the flesh trying to have that power and that control that is never of ours okay so now i want to go back to where she was linda you were reading in first john three and one Yes. Starting at two. Um, you could start at one again. Okay. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the children of Yahweh. Therefore, the world knoweth us not because he knew him not. Okay. So if you've got all these fruits, these good fruits coming from your tree, and the world has all these bad fruits, corrupt fruits coming from their tree. Do you think they're going to know and understand you? When you're, when you're um, manifesting peace and joy and long suffering and patience and self control, and they're ranting and raving and, and going all crazy because they didn't get the raise they thought they'd get, do you think that they're going to understand why you're so calm and you're just like, hey, Yashua knows what I need. If I need a raise, I'm going to get it because he's going to make sure I get it. You see all through the book where things happen to people and they did not even ask. It just came to them. The food came to them. The armies came to them. The angels came to them. That's all because Yahweh's pushing it along and Yahweh knows what we need. And do we believe that? Of course we do. Yahshua's in us. How could we not? The one that manifested the baskets of full of fishes and the loaves of bread and and manifested his his healings and brought people back from the dead that was just not a parlor show folks that was to show you that he could raise your soul from the dead and that's how you come in here you come in here dead what manner of of love the father hath showed us or bestowed upon us that we should be called the children of Elohim. Right there, what manner of love is because he saw fit to give you the Holy Spirit. Just like he put the breath of life in you, like for me at 63 years ago, he put the breath of life in this body. And that was just a witness, and it keeps on going today to show me the breath of life spiritually. I didn't put that in myself, I had no clue. And you didn't put it in yourself either. And yes, you do have to believe in this gospel, but you cannot believe it on your own. You absolutely can't. And I'm sorry if that doesn't sound right, but if you, when you read and it says you must believe, you must be born again, absolutely, you must be born again. Who's having you be born again? You didn't help yourself be born the first time and you're not helping yourself be born the second time. And all of these things, all they add up to is praising Yahshua. So we don't have to worry that we're going off the charts. We're praising Yahshua. So now he's saying that he would, what would he, the manner of love that he would bestow upon us. It's the revelation of Yahshua in our hearts and minds. And if you look over, uh, Sharon, I'll have you get Colossians 1 and 26. If you look over there, nobody, nobody guessed this one. Everybody had their guards and they were out in the temple and the sanctuaries. They were out in the groves. Everybody had their gods, but nobody guessed, nobody guessed 
that there would be a time when your God would be able to be in you and live through you. Nobody guessed that one. They had Dagon, they had Baal, they had all these ones in the groves, they had this and they had that. And nobody thought that the God would be living in you. So go ahead and read that, Sharon. Colossians 1.26, even the mystery which had been hid from ages and from generations, but now is manifest to his sons, to whom Yahweh would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Yahshua in you, the hope of glory. Now, it's, it didn't say that if you read Isaiah 8 and 20, and you read John 1 and 20, whatever, and it did not say by reading those scriptures, you will know the mystery among the Gentiles. It does not say that, and you will never find that. See, it says, to whom Yahweh would make known what is the riches of the glory of the mystery. Mm -hmm. And you know yourself, if you love a good mystery, you don't go to the back of the book and read out the and mm. read, find out the butler did it. Unless you can't wait, you would like to come up to, you know, through the mystery and then all the clues and you figure out who it was. But the point is when you pick up the book, you don't know who done it. And that's the thing with us. When we pick up the Bible, when we went to, to church, when we didn't go to church, when we were out there fumbling around, when somebody asked us to come down to class, Yahweh showed you the mystery. And that is why you keep coming. It is never because you tapped into a little rhythm of this over here and that over here and said, I see it. No, no, no. You might have saw some repetitions. Even Christian uh, bookstores have repetitions and show how uh, Yahshua did this and Yahshua did this according to the old. It's in the Bible that he would do this and do that according to those works, right? Mm -hmm. But that is not what brought you to faith. Faith in the operation is Yahweh laying it on you. Yahweh making a difference between academic information of the law and prophets and making it real. And there is quite a difference. It's the difference between death and life. And it's the difference between having Yahshua in you which is your hope of glory or not. And I'll tell you what, if you're not, when Yahweh, when this thing wraps up and ties up, all Yahweh's looking for is his son. He's looking for Yahshua. And guess where we are? We're in that body. That's all he's looking for. You know, you can show that a little bit better. First Corinthians 15 and 28, please. Uh, let me see here. Um, I'm going to say 15 and 24. Or no, 23, because we're talking about the fruits. And here's Yahshua being the first fruits of righteousness of that second list that we read. For every man, go ahead. But every man in his own order, Yahshua the first fruits. Afterward, they that are Yahshua's at his coming. Then cometh the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to Yahweh, Elohim, even the father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. So remember what I was saying that here's Yahweh at the end. I don't want to make it sound like this person and that person, but that pure Holy Spirit is going to be delivering up what he came to do back to the father back to the purpose the reason that he was sent so he's going to have put down all rule and all authority and power because remember all flesh it says over there in uh, john the first chapter that all or maybe it's the 17th chapter of john but anyway that all flesh was given unto yashua all that power was given unto yashua and now at the end he's laying it down where He's laying it down to Yahweh Elohim, right? He's going to put down all rule, all authority, and all power. Go ahead. 25. For he must reign 
till he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Okay, Sharon, can I have um, John? Uh, let me see, is it the 15, 15 and 25? Talking about Yahshua saying he was the resurrection. Go ahead, uh, Linda. Okay. For he hath put all things under his feet, but when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted who did put all things under him. Because we're talking about the unity of the Godhead, okay? But he's putting all things under his feet. And remember, the last enemy is death. And what do we say about ourselves in the body of Yahshua the Messiah? That second death has nothing over us. There, we, we don't fear that. We don't fear the death that people fear that don't know Yahshua. Okay, go ahead. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that Yahweh may be all in all. See, Yahshua is in a sonship degree. He is in a purpose. He's in the plan of what Yahweh has designed from the beginning. So when everything has come to its totality and it's all summed up, then Yahshua, he's handed everything back to the father. We're in Yahshua. So the father is grateful and happy to see the son come back with his bride. And you can read all about the brides with um, Isaac and Rebecca and Jacob and Rachel. You can read all about that, how happy they were to bring a bride home that was of their tribe, of Israel. It was important that they did that. And this is, that was just an example to show here's Yahshua handing it back to Yahweh Elohim. And he's done the job well. Here's his bride. So when Yahweh's looking, he's just looking for Yahshua because why? Because the bride's in him. And that's what I was saying. There's no fear. There's no fear of that death because of why? Did you find that where it says Yahshua says, I'm the resurrection and the life? I think I called it wrong. Mm-hmm. But it's in John. Anybody yell it out, please. Joshua says, I am the resurrection and the life. Maybe it's John 11. Yeah, 11.25, it looks like. 11.25, thanks, Greg. Okay, can we just read that? Because remember now, we're in the body. And we're in yeah. the body of what here? It's not the body of the Titanic, folks. It's in the body of resurrection. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. John eleven twenty five. 25. Yahshua said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. I am the resurrection. I am the life. I'm the light of every man. I'm the life. He that believes in me, not your job. I've made you believe in me, but he that believes in me, though he were dead, which we all were, yet shall we live. Keep going. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Now we're talking about our souls here, right? We're living and we're believing because Yah, we're living in Yahshua and Yahshua is in us, okay? And we shall never die. That second death. Now, is everybody going to the cemetery? You've already seen it. People like Fred and Dr. Gill are gone. They've gone to the cemetery in their physical body. But guess what? Fred said, I ain't there. Don't be coming looking for me there. I ain't there. Okay. Now, here it says, you shall never die. And then he says, believest thou this? Now, granted, this is before Pentecost, but he's just making the point, and I'm just making the point of the, the cause and effect of the Holy Spirit on us. Like, it's like saying, if you want to live, you will breathe. And that is a true statement, right? Mm -hmm. But please tell me anything that I have to do with breathing. I have nothing to do with breathing. And Peg used to crack me up because she'd say her kids used to think they were going to hold their breath until they died because they were trying to, you know, throw a fit and get something. And Peg would laugh at him because 
the thing is, if you hold your breath just so long, guess what? You'll pass out. Right. You won't be, you won't be dying. You can't even make yourself die. You can hang yourself, but I'm just saying that breath, if you want to live, you have to breathe. You mm -hmm. have nothing to do with that, but it's a true statement. Now, if you want to have eternal life, you will believe that is a true statement, but I'm just making, I'm parting the ways right here, right now. I'm parting the ways saying, but the cause of the believing is not because you decided to believe or right. you said, this is the best thing ever. I'm going to join up with this one. None of that. And, and the, the smartest people, the people that have hung on in this class for years are now gone because Yahshua had a purpose in mind and now it's over for them. So every time you come to a class, every time you sit in your chair, you say, hallelujah, right? We yeah. say it through the prayer. Every speaker says it. I'm so glad to be here. I'm so glad to hear your voice. I'm so glad we have this Zoom class. We say those things because Yahshua has resurrected our soul, sick souls, right? I am. Read that again, Sharon. Five minutes, Dr. Kometi. Thank you. 11.25, Yahshua said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall in me shall never die. Believest thou this? And we are testifying to that tonight and the next day and the next day and the next day that we believe that he is the resurrected Yahshua in our hearts and in our minds because of the fruit that we bear. You, you know, you have to be an idiot to look at a tree and not see the fruit, whether it's good or bad. Mm. I mean, it's an obvious thing. And some things are even and poisonous they're beautiful berries and they're red sparkling and they're beautiful and they're poisonous so don't think everything is going to be uh you know with a worm sticking out of it but by the fruits that we've got we've had a list to look at and people can fool us by that list they can look patient they can look long suffering and they can really be struggling and fighting it inside but he's just talking about the fruits of the spirit and you know yourself just ask yourself, what was I like before I came into class? And you'll see all those things come up that were of the first list of the lust of the flesh. And then what am I like now? And you'll see that second list just come out. And you know what? You're not trying. Like David, he was mad because that giant was talking about Yahweh's name in vain. He wasn't trying to get any glory and he wasn't trying to show off to his brothers. All he wanted to do was to have a chance at that Goliath because he defied the Elohim of the living armies of Israel. And that's what we're talking about, folks. There is no glory for us. Yahshua, us being in Yahshua and him getting the glory allows us the glory because we're his bride. See, and that's where we stay. We don't have to worry about divorce. We don't have to worry about separations. We're in him and he's in us. And that's where this thing is going to ride out just that way. And Doc said, if you ever see this thing, you'll die just that way. And that's the testament of those that died, the true Yahshuans, they died just that way. Mm -hmm. So thank you for the time and hallelujah, Yahshua. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dr. Kometi. And our third speaker this afternoon will be Dr. Diane Emler from our Oceanside class. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. <laughs> um, it's good to be here. Uh, and I have uh, enjoyed class uh, thus far. Uh, let's go and start at the scripture reading if we could okay matthew seven and one 
judge not that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye measure, it shall be measured to you again. Now, uh, I remember first reading that <clears throat> and thinking, um, boy, I'm going to be judged like I judge others. And it scared me uh, because I, uh, at the time, and I try not to now uh, judge others uh, quickly. And when it comes down to judging uh, another brethren, uh, another person, I'll put it that way, it's very difficult uh, to know uh, what shoes they're in. Uh, it, because for us, we judge after the sight of our eyes and the hearing of our ears, but that is not the way uh, Yahweh judges. Um, Trying to remember the verse. It's Isaiah 11, around verse 3. Okay. Isaiah 11, 3. Thank you, Sasha. Isaiah 11 and 3. Why don't you just pick it up at 1? Mm -hmm. Now shall come forth the rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And mm -hmm. the spirit of Yahweh shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of Yahweh, and shall make him of quick understanding and the fear of Yahweh, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. Now, there's a lot in those few verses, but let's just take the third verse first off. And that being that Yahweh does not judge after the sight of his eyes or the hearing of his ears. And in totality, that is how we judge by what we hear somebody say, what we see them doing, and then suddenly we pass judgment, uh, good or bad. And Yahweh is much wiser than that. And he judges uh, after and we have difficulty seeing what's in somebody's heart. And none of us are prolific in mind reading. Hmm. So the way that we judge as far as a carnal mind, and I just mean carnal meaning physical, we judge physically so. Uh, we see an act that someone does, and suddenly, you know, we're ready to burn them at the stake. And the point is, we don't know what was in their heart. We don't know what Yahweh is putting them through, and for what purpose. See, I think that uh, it's wise uh not to do judging of people but what we can judge is whether or not the gospel the teaching mm -hmm. of the messiah whether or not that is accurate 
whether that is true or whether that is false. And so in those things, Yahweh has given us the equipment, meaning the law and uh, stay here in Isaiah 11 and 1, but get me Isaiah 8 and 20. Isaiah 8 and 20, to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light or revelation of truth in them. All right. So if someone is trying to teach you about God and that person is not showing you witnesses in the law and in the prophets, there is something wrong. Um, drop that and go over and get uh, uh, Luke 24 and 27. Luke 24, 27. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures. Okay, who is it that's talking, Sharon? Joshua. This is Joshua. The world calls him Jesus. We're not even going to discuss that because you can Google Joshua uh, and see that that is the correct name of the Messiah. So the Messiah is speaking to his disciples here. Pick it up again, Sharon. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. So the Messiah or Yahshua, when he went to uh explain himself to tell his uh, uh, disciples something about himself. He went back to Moses and the first five books of the Bible are attributed to Moses and to the prophets or the testimony, which is from Joshua all the way up uh, until Malachi, which is the book before Matthew. So he went back to the law and the prophets to explain himself. Now, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, uh, the Pauline epistles, all of them were not written during the time of the Messiah. They were not written uh, till years afterwards. So that whenever he spoke to them, it's concerning the scriptures, he was talking about Moses and the prophets. Now, when I was in church, I grew up uh, going to a Presbyterian church, uh, which I it one time had strong beliefs, but by the time I was there, uh, there just uh, wasn't a lot of teaching about God. And I guess that's really part of the difficulty that we have because this is a school and it is not a church. Now, when you go to church, you go to sing hymns. You go to uh, give up your money. You go to find out the events of the church that are happening the next week or you go to, uh, we had communion, I think, once or twice a month. 
but their intent in church was not to teach you. Their intent was for you to worship God. And here uh, we see that worshiping the creator must be done. Why don't we run over and get it? Uh, 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 John 4, 23 and 24. John 4, 23, but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the father in spirit and in truth for the now, father. I'm sorry, Linda, but the true worshipers are going to worship him how? In spirit and in truth. In spirit and in truth. Go ahead and read. For the father seeketh such to worship him. Right read Yahweh is spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth so this is how uh Yahweh wants to be worshiped he doesn't want to be worshiped with you uh kneeling and standing and kneeling and standing and and memorizing uh uh Oh, I forget what you call it. When the priest says something, you're supposed to say something back. Mm -hmm. The, the uh, repetitions that you're supposed to use in prayer, uh, like with the rosary bead or giving of your money or getting physically water baptized or uh, uh you know, all of the things that you do in church, uh, those things are all physical. You're being baptized in physical water. You're uh, um, eating uh, communion. When I had communion, uh, it was Wonder Bread cut up in little squares. And then little shot glasses uh, that had uh, grape juice in them. And uh, that's what we drank and what we ate. And that was supposed to represent the body and blood of the Messiah. And I have never understood why we were really doing that. But according to Christian belief, we, the, uh, the Messiah came to teach us uh, a Christian way of life. And what a Christian way of life is, whatever hierarchies, whatever pope, whatever priest decided that it was. The Messiah never told us uh, uh, to eat uh, communion, uh, never told us to get baptized in physical water. In fact, he said just the opposite. Uh, go over there into Matthew 3 and... Uh, I, I guess if you can pick it up at 11. Matthew 3 and 11, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. Now, but this he, is John the Baptist talking. This is not the Messiah. Right. And the Messiah really was not going around baptizing people. It was John the Baptist that was sent before him to baptize. Now, let me just explain this quickly, that uh, the law that was given to Israel uh, at Mount Sinai, which is uh, uh, the law uh, 
that contained uh, physical ways of worship, that law or the Mosaic law was given to the Hebrews and the Hebrews only. There was no one else there to hear that law. And at that point in time, the whole nation of Israel said, all that you have said, Yahweh, we will do. And that uh, 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 included the Ten Commandment law uh, and uh, the law of circumcision, the uh, the law of physical washings, the law of the uh, uh, priesthood, all of these laws that were contained in this Mosaic covenant given to the Jews. Now, go ahead, Greg. Uh, this chart shows it uh, better because you've got on the left side of Yahshua, the circumcision, the ceremonies, the physical washing, suppers, sacrifices, and ordinances. And there were actually, including the Ten Commandments, like 613 uh, laws that were given to Israel to follow. Now, as I already said about three times, this law was only, O-N-L-Y, only given to the Hebrew nation. It was never given to a Gentile. And a Gentile is anybody who is not Hebrew, see? Now, Israel tried to keep that law for some 1,500 years and could not keep it to the point where it was said that there was none righteous, no, not one. There was not one person who could keep this law. And I'll just quote it in Deuteronomy uh, 625. It says, if Israel had kept this law, it would be their righteousness. But because they couldn't keep the law, they were found to be unrighteous. And under the law, if you broke one law, you broke them all. I'm talking about 613 laws. And if you broke one, you broke them all. And the penalty for breaking the law, many of the acts, not all, but many of the acts was death. In fact, Israel had to offer up a sacrifice, a lamb, a turtle dove, something to offer up a lamb so that the innocent lamb, lamb uh, could shed its blood uh, so the person would live. Now, 1,500 years passes from Mount Sinai and uh, all of Israel found under sin, spiritually, they were dead. Meaning they were still walking around, but they were condemned in their conscience straight from Adam and condemned again because they could not keep that law. So, uh, um, John the Baptist comes on the scene uh, and he is, uh, it was a baptism unto repentance, meaning the, uh, he would ask those that came to him, have you sinned? And when they said yes, he put them in water. Now, 
they admitted to being dead and what you normally do to someone who's dead is that you bury them. Well, being uh, put in physical water uh, and completely submerged is the same as being buried. I mean, there's lots of burial at sea. And so that those who had sin were buried by John the Baptist. Now, Yahshua did not come in to bury anybody. He came in to save or to resurrect. But what we're talking about now is John and uh, his uh, statement to the people as he was baptizing. All right, go ahead. Matthew 3 and 11, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whom shoes I am not worthy to bear, he shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Now he's talking about Yahshua. Now I have come to baptize or to bury you in water, but there's one that's going to come that's going to baptize you in the Holy Spirit and in fire. Well, some people think the word baptism means water. Well, if it meant water, why would you say you're going to baptize in the Holy Spirit in fire? The word actually should be immerse, so that Yahshua is going to come and immerse you in the Holy Spirit and in fire. Now go ahead and read. Uh whose fan is in his hand and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the shaft with unquenchable fire. Go ahead. Then, then cometh Yahshua from Galilee to Jordan unto John. Now here comes Yahshua. The very first thing he does in his ministry is comes to the Jordan where John was baptizing. Read. And John to be baptized of to be baptized of him, but John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me. Now don't you see, because it was a baptism unto repentance, he would have had to have asked, Have you sinned? Well, Yahshua was the only one on the face of the earth who had not sinned. And when he told John, no, I have not sinned, John says, then I need to be baptized of you. Why are you coming to me? Read. And Yahshua answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. So Yahshua says to John, suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill. Now the word fulfill means to finish to bring to an end, to complete. Physical washings in water had been going on uh, uh, since mm -hmm. the beginning of time. You read in Genesis that the earth was inundated in water. Uh, time of Noah, once again, the earth inundated in water. Under uh, uh, the Mosaic law, uh, there was washings of the priests. Uh, John uh, in 1 Corinthians 10 and 1 says that all of Israel, when they came up out of Egypt and through the waters of the Red Sea, were baptized in the water and in the cloud that led them up out of 
uh, the Red Sea. So there's all kinds of physical washings going on uh, before Yahshua stood there with John at the Jordan. But John, uh, Yahshua told him, I have come to fulfill or to bring physical washings to an end so that nobody has to get dunked in water again. And he said the same thing about the supper. It was the last supper. And that supper uh, that he partook uh, with his disciples uh, was actually the celebration of the Passover. You can read that in your book. And the Passover started way back in Egypt. And Israel had to perform a Passover before they could leave Egypt. He didn't come to start communion or the Eucharist. He came in to finish it. And he did that or fulfilled all of the law and the prophets, all of those things written of him that's what he did in his ministry to bring this physical, carnal, natural, earthly, temporary way of worship to an end. Because obviously, after 1500 years, and it didn't help anybody, he, through his mercy, brought it to an end. But because he was the only one that could keep the law, he did in fulfillment. And the uh, act that he uh, uh, did on the cross, uh, the, it, it was the same way with the Passover. They had to bring out a lamb without spot and without blemish put the uh, blood of the lamb at the top of the door, two side posts and a basin of blood at the bottom of the door. John looked at Yahshua, John the Baptist, and said in John 129, behold the lamb of Yahweh that's come to take away the sin of the world. That sin was from Adam and from that Mosaic covenant. Yahshua also said that he was the door. If you want to enter unto the Father, you must come by me. And so he was the door. So he had to have the blood on him because he's the door, the two hands, the crown of thorns, around his head, and then at the bottom of his feet, making the four points of blood. Now, he went through that death, buried in the tomb for three days, and then resurrected, not a physical body, but a quickening spirit. And he tarried with the disciples uh, uh, for 40 days in that uh, uh, resurrected spirit body. And after that period of time, he ascended up out of their sight. And still at that time, uh, one of the last things they wanted to know was whether or not the physical kingdom of Jerusalem was coming yet. And that's not the point. So uh, 50, uh, uh, 10 days later, all of the boys and women, about 120 of them were up in an upper room uh, and go over to Acts, the second chapter. And somebody uh, run over and get me uh, John, uh, 
fourth chapter, I think it is. Acts two and one. Yes. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. All right. So here we are. Uh, uh, they're in the upper room, 120 of them. Uh, and they're there on the day of Pentecost, which was a feast of Israel's. And that took place on June 6th. Go ahead and read. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven like a rushing mighty wind. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Now that was the spirit. Read. Five minutes, there, Dr. Amler. Okay. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance. All right. So there is Yahshua immersing them with the Holy Spirit and with fire, just like John was talking about. See, now just real quick, run over to John, the fourth chapter. We're going to have to drop Isaiah 11. There's no time to go over there. Um, I Let's just... Um, Oh, pick it up at five and kind of read through there. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so you can you can do six. I'll save you all the names. <laughs> Go ahead. John four and six. Now Jacob's well was there. Yahshua, therefore, being worried with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. Right. There come there cometh the woman of Samaria to draw water. Yahshua said it unto her, give me to drink. For his, his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then said, said it the woman of Samaria unto him, how is it that thou being a Jew ask drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria and now, the Jews? The, the Samaritans uh, were originally a part of uh, uh, the Hebrew uh, nation, and they uh, were descendants. Oh, help me out! The the two that were Joseph's sons, um, uh, Ephraim, Ephraim and Manassas. Yeah. Manassas. All right. Mm -hmm. So they were descendants of Ephraim and Manassas. And uh, there's a long story. They uh, claim that they did not go uh, into captivity uh, when they were put in the Babylonian captivity. And they believe to this day there's a Samaritan religion. They believe to this day that they're the only ones that are worshiping the original uh, Hebrew law. And they felt uh, that where they were, uh, there was a mountain and they believed that Joshua built another uh, a tabernacle up there. Anyways, there was a fight because, and to this day still, they live in the West Bank and they believe that there is where the temple should be built, where the rest of the Jews believe that it should be built in Jerusalem. Now go ahead and read. Uh, for the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. And that's why, read. Yahshua answered and said unto her, If thou knowest the gift of Yahweh, and it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. He's talking about if you had given me, you should have asked me for living water. Go ahead and read. I'm out of time. 
And the woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Read. Yash Yashua saith unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I give him shall be in him a well of water springing out into everlasting life. Now that living water are the words of Yahshua mm -hmm. that will cleanse you. If you drink of that water, you shall never thirst. Now, if you want to, you can read down further and you will find out where uh, the woman starts talking about where the temple should be built. And um, pick up 22 real come, quick. 22, and you worship, ye you know not what. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall, shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. So what Yahshua is telling her, you can fight about where the, the temple should be built on your mountain or over uh, in, uh, the Mount Moriah, but time is going to come where you will not worship in those temples made with hands because Yahshua is in you and within you, you shall worship in spirit and in truth. Thank you very much for the time. Thank you, Dr. Emler. We'd like to thank everybody who participated in our Zoom class today. And we'd also like to thank those who have viewed us on YouTube. We hold our Zoom class here every Saturday from 4 to 6 p.m. Pacific time. And at this time, I'd like to ask the class to stay muted until the live stream has ended. We'll now be dismissed by the doxology, which is taken from the last two verses of the book of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless, before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time and now and ever. Let us all say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah.